A lot of people don't understand this, but there are people which I want to warn about too, okay? So there is a problem with this. So there are people who don't <coughs> like uh, Christians who praise the Lord. So they don't like it when Christians, let's say, for example, they run around the room, right? <laughs> so Christians, what do they do? They like to run around. So they would think that that's fleshy. There's another thing. They don't like it when uh, Christians do some shouting. And I mean like really loud shouting. Some of the more pious Christians, they'll say, well, you know, you can say amen, but I don't like it when you go, whoo, stuff like that, like a really loud noise that's like too loud. Another thing, now this is probably more common, which I can kind of understand. They don't like it when we throw things around the room. And then they think that when we throw hymn books that it's like something uh, like irre uh, irreverent, that it's not sacred, that it's blasphemy. Now one thing is this, okay? There's only one book that's considered holy, Amen. that's the Bible. That's right. The hymn is not a sacred instrument. The Bible is the only sacred thing that you will ever have. In the front of your hymn book, it's not called Holy Hymnal. It's There's only one book, Holy Bible. Yes, but I will explain this because I guess I can understand some people because it's not like that we mistreat hymn books either. I mean, it is something that we treasure where it talks about praising the Lord. So you do have some kind of respect for that. So when we throw a hymn book, some people get a little bit a little concerned about that. So about throwing hymn books or throwing stuff, okay? Throwing hymn books or other stuff. And people might go, well, that's just weird and strange. I don't like that. That's fleshy. Okay, so first let me say this. One, it is very true that this can be very fleshy. So I want to say that. That way people <clears throat> don't misunderstand what I'm going to say. I'm not defending this thing completely. A lot of this can be very fleshy. People think that the more that you run around the room or you shout louder, that that makes you more spiritual. No. By the way, you got to be careful of this. This can be very demonic as well. Yeah. I've seen people, okay, I kid you not, this is an independent, fundamental Baptist church. They had a big revival meeting. Sure, you can run around the room, throw stuff, you know, and shout. But then what happened was is that the pastor kept telling this singer to keep singing and he kept singing and keep singing over and over and over again and what happened was is that there happened to be a missionaries everybody just came on the altar crying weeping and then it just kept repeating repeating the pastor kept telling him to keep doing it keep doing it that it that it turned into a really strange thing where even the missionary's wife came forward and supposedly genuinely got saved why because they were so overrun by emotions that's the thing the key is when it's overtly run when emotions are concentrated rather than the Holy Spirit and that is very demonic Pentecostals charismatic are one of the prime the greatest examples these guys if you see their Brownsville revival services they bark like dogs they meow like cats and that's just too extreme right there there are people who would just laugh but when they laugh, they just keep laughing and laughing and laughing and call it the holy laugh, and they go minutes. That's just messed up right there. So you got to realize this. A lot of it can be demonic as well because it's overtly run by emotions. It's not done where it's focused on the Holy Spirit. And when you focus on the Holy Spirit... As uh, one of my favorite preachers said when we were shouting running around the room, it was done indecently and in order. It's not like that we go out of order. We know that people are going to run, praise the Lord. There's nothing wrong with that. But if it goes out of hand, and watch these Browns River revivals, I kid you not, it is so random and sporadic that it is out of order. They just go however way the emotions go. You can see a clear difference with that and Bible believers who shout run around the room for the Lord. Like our blowout service, didn't you? We were indecent and in order, right? We didn't go outside of schedule. We were too much systemized, actually. We were too organized, I think. We were too organized. I had to have people doing this and doing this and doing this to take care of things at the church. So it was not out of order. So in Galatians chapter 5, I'll read that real briefly right here. It shows that these things can be demonic and dangerous. And then I'll explain how we do it is different. 
Galatians chapter 5 and then verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. See, emotions. Emotions are very dangerous. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. What does the Bible say here? It says that the Holy Spirit has to be done in decent and in order, not out of order. Verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. Now look at this though. Verse 33, for God is not the author of what? Confusion. But of what? Peace as in all churches of the saints. Was it confusion when Bible believers praise the Lord in our blowout service? Did you sense confusion or did you sense peace? It was a lot of peace, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like the Holy Spirit was moving and we thank God for that. That is of the Holy Spirit. It was not done out of confusion, but go to those Brownsville Revival meetings. It's just total chaos. It's confusing. You, you don't know what's going to pop out next in their schedule. <clears throat> now, let me explain these cases right here. So let's first look at 2 Samuel. I apologize. Your hand was out of there. So now you're at 2 Samuel chapter 5. So is there shame to run around the room? There is shame, but I'll tell you what God did. God actually made this woman not give birth to children ever again because she opposed this one man who ran around for the Lord. How about that? We're going to look at the book of 2 Samuel, and then notice right here at chapter, uh, did I say 5? Chapter 6, I apologize, chapter 6. Verse 5, And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord, and on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and on psalteries and on timbrels and on cornets and on cymbals. So this is during worshiping, praising God, right? What did he do during in the midst of that? You'll notice that at verse 13, and it was so that when they bare the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with what? All his might. See, he did it with all of his energy. He was running, jumping up and down. Verse 15, so David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with what? Shouting. There was a lot of shouting as well. Look at verse 16. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the what? The Lord, it's done before the Lord. And she what? Despised him in her heart. Now look at these high and mighty Christians, what they said. Look at verse 20. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. So you notice that is, if you hear an accusation like, what you guys are doing is vain and that's shameful, you better watch out before you say that kind of stuff to Bible believers who are running around before the Lord. Oh, that's vain, fleshy. That's, uh, that is shameful to the testimony of Bible belief. Watch out because what did God do? Look at verse 23. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. That takes that seriously. Takes that seriously. The Bible took that seriously that the Holy Spirit made record of that. Don't mess with God. Okay, look at Revelation. Look at the book of Revelation. <coughs> oh, excuse me. We're going to look at Revelation. Chapter, five, uh, chapter 4, verse 10, please. Revelation chapter 4, verse 10. Uh, I don't like throwing hymn, uh, hymn books or shoes or jackets or whatnot, you know. We saw Missionary Hansen. He was singing, It Will Be Worth It All. He just slammed his suit down on the ground like that. Then you saw several guys throwing, throwing out the hymn books like that. And then Dr. David Walker, I guess he had no respect for price issues with red hymn books, and he threw, he tossed one red hymn book up. <laughs> but then the thing is this, is like, oh, but that's something we respect for the Lord. Well, let me ask you this. The crowns that God give to us, aren't they holy, sacred treasures? Yes, sir. Yeah, the, there's a crown of glory, crown of righteousness. 
That's holy, right? Look what, they, look what these cursed people did. How irreverent. Verse 10, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and what? Worship him. Look how they worshiped him. And cast their what? Crowns, Crowns before the throne, saying, look at that. Oh, how irreverent. What are you going to do up in heaven? You dare to say, that's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. You know what God's going to do? He's going to ignore you and say, no, keep tossing them. That's keep right. throwing them. What's wrong with tossing them forward as if we're casting them at the feet of Jesus? Right. Now, one thing that boggles my mind is this. If the world doesn't think it's strange that you run around and dance about... If you get a million dollars, if you get a billion dollars in your suitcase and somebody jumps around and runs around the room because they're so happy about a million dollars, are you going to say, oh, that's blasphemy? No. It's a natural, understandable human reaction that anyone would do that if they're so overjoyed with something. Shouldn't I be more overjoyed with God than a million dollars in my suitcase? So I can't contain myself and you're not going to stop me from running around the room. Amen. See, there's nothing wrong with it. That's a natural human reaction. Isn't it a natural human reaction when during graduation everyone's happy that they graduated and they all toss their hats in the air? Do we see a bunch of Christians going like this? Oh, that's blasphemy. Oh, how, how not sacred. And What in the world, man? What in the world? And then you think it's strange when we toss things up in the air for the Lord when we're when we're so happy about what God has done for us, we're celebrating what he did to save our souls from hell. Uh, let's look at Ezra. Let's close it right here. Ezra. So you got to understand this, folks, is that I can understand at the beginning you kind of feel weirded out about that. I mean, I felt weirded out too, but do you know why you felt weirded out? I'll tell you why. You're so used to seeing the world shouting at the baseball stadium, but you're not used to seeing Christians doing that for the Lord. Amen. That's something you got to understand. You know what you also think? You think church is some kind of serious, dull, quiet environment, just like a Catholic monastery, where everything has to be performed rightly in a ritual? Uh -huh. See, that it's not done where everything is systemized in an order system. That's, that's where's your mind at? See, that's why it's understandable people would think like that strange at the beginning because we're too worldly minded. We're too brainwashed by how the world perceives churches as. We got to look at what the Bible does with people. Look at the book of Ezra. <clears throat> and then we'll look at chapter, don't read chapter 2. That, that, that is messed up. Look at chapter 3. Chapter 2 is a lot of names that will not bring our point across. Look at Ezra chapter 3, verse 12. So people don't like it when you shout loudly or when you cry as well. A lot of people don't like that. Oh, I don't like it when they go on the altar and then they cry. You know, they're too emotional. And look, man, you better calm down. You better calm down because I'll show you something that's extremely loud. That's, you think Bible believers are loud? Look at this one. Ezra chapter 3 verse uh, 11. And they sang together by course in what? Praising and giving thanks unto the Lord. See, they were praising, giving God thanks. So what happened after that? Verse 12. <clears throat> but many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers, who were ancient men, that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy, so that people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. Look at that. There is shout and there is crying, but, it is, but they couldn't tell the difference. See, they couldn't tell the difference with shouting and crying. What's wrong with shouting, Wah! like that? Because over there, then a person might be crying, Wah! like that to the Lord. Probably that's how it went. I'm not sure. But the point is this. There's no distinction here. So you see, this kind of shout is not just saying, oh, amen, amen. No, they weren't just saying amen. They did something more than that. They were going like, woo, or ah, like that. They were doing something like that. And, well, it's too loud for me. Well, look at the next part of verse 13. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the noise was heard how far? Afar. Afar off. By the way, do you know who's going to shout louder than all of us? God, when he shouts and sounds his rapture woo. voice. What are you going to do? That's too loud for me, God. <laughs> Come on, grow up, man. Grow up. 
You know what? We've got to, so notice all of these were in context with praising. You notice that? Worshiping God. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's go back to the biblical stuff. What I don't understand is this. How come people question the way we do it today when back at the Great Awakening Revivals, this was normal? You got 1800s, 17, uh, 1700s or 1800s, Billy Bray running around the room. And then he, sometimes he gets upset at people who are just deadbeats and he'd pick up the person from the seat and run around the room with him <laughs> because he would get upset at the person's uh, passiveness and deadness. Billy Bray once said, when I lift up my right foot, I shout glory. If I lift up my left foot, I shout hallelujah. I remember that Dr. Upman said that I think it was Bob Jones University, during the old days of Bob Jones University, that they would be running around, they would be shouting. Look at BJU today. You think that's what you see at BJU today? Billy Sunday, you know what he did? He slid across bases. He even broke chairs. He broke chairs. So this was Great Awakening Revivals, folks. Maybe we've just got too complacent with technology, maybe. We're so used to looking at a television, letting the television do all the animation and moving and excitement for us when we can't use that with our bodies for the Lord Jesus Christ. You're too busy doing this for the world and you can't run around the room for the Lord? 